Hello everyone, welcome back to Silver Tears Tarot and welcome to a reading about kind of the nature of this relationship. That's what we're going to get into today. Um, it's a question that I've gotten in many forms from many people over time and I've gotten a few more versions of it here lately so I thought I'd share one of the versions and then just kind of talk through um what it is that you guys have been asking we'll get into the reading so it'll be a general reading for this collective um it won't resonate with everyone but of course it shouldn't resonate with everyone if it does resonate with you you may want to subscribe maybe want to um look at some of the other readings that have been the other messages that have come through because they're all very much connected all of these readings are very much connected the same energy kind of flows in and then we see what's happening in the now. So what we're going to look at in this one is really kind of what is it that um, that keeps your person, what keeps you stuck to your person and prevents you from walking away, okay? So why is it that I can't walk away? What is it that makes me feel so connected? Um, one of the questions, one of the ways that this question has been asked recently um, really got to me. And so the person said, so my question is, what is it specifically between him and I that prevents us from walking away to keep us in this loop? Is it because we were destined to meet and go through these lessons, but not necessarily being ending up together? I'm a bit confused. And so I thought this is a great version of this question um others were looking at look i'm trying to figure out how to walk away but i can't figure out how to think about this why are we so stuck together so we're going to look at kind of the energy between you to start out with this reading um but now you get the idea of kind of where i'm coming from it was a very impassioned couple of questions as they were coming in so we have the hierophant definitely looking for guidance there's a sense of looking for guidance wanting to find some guidance wanting to you know have some guidance in this energy between the two of you right now I don't see you looking to one another for this although you have to ask because I know sometimes we will see your person using um, your energy for strength or you trying to get some of the strength from you utilizing you as uh, somebody to help hold them up. So we've got the Hierophant, definitely looking for guidance, but not specifically for one from one another. We also have the Ten of Cups. Oh, and this is that feeling of I've lost my access to the Ten of Cups. Um, there's a fear here, in, and it feels like it's uh, unrealistically permanent. So it's like your person has this fear that they could never get back into contact with you. And yet they kind of feel like they can't not get in contact with you. This is a feeling of somebody who is, you don't have to be completely out of communication for this to still apply. Because this is that feeling of connectedness and feeling like you're supposed to be far more connected than you are. Um, and a lot of you aren't having any communication at all. We're going to get into that here and I think some of the subsequent readings just kind of look particularly into the no communication situations but what we see is whether there's actual direct communication or not there's a feeling that the two of you um, belong much closer together but that there's been a missed opportunity here um, there is guidance coming in I dropped these on the floor but they want to be part of the reading there's guidance coming in for your person about how they are kind of supposed to be handling things but they're having a hard time believing it to be true like they um they are in a new place where they've learned some things where they trust themselves in a new way um than maybe what they used to but they still have a little bit of doubt as it relates to this it has a lot to do with them being afraid to reach out and contact you because of being afraid of being rejected in some way um, so there's definitely a feeling of them kind of looking at your energy, but not admitting that they're looking at it. They don't feel ready to interact with you on some level. And so that's why they're having a hard time setting it into motion. Or if they do set it into motion, they have a hard time maintaining it. And this is why I was saying it doesn't matter so much 
how much communication you have going between you because this could easily be the energy of a situation where you have very little energy going back and forth between the two of you, um, but they're just having a really hard time initiating it. Um, boy, I wish that seven of coins was part of it. I don't think it is. It'll come back out. Sometimes um, I will put something away and say I don't think it's part of the reading and it'll pop right back out and I will stand corrected but that's the cool thing i can put things back in the deck and if they're supposed to come back out they will immediately um, or at whatever range um so we've got the chariot here in reverse this is a sense of it's like freezing like they freeze in place like they know they need to move on from this place where they are but they can't seem to make it happen it's more going on with what's uh what's happening with this third party of theirs they're really having a rough time with this and i mean i guess it's been showing up in a ton of readings lately, but it's like there's this truth that is really not letting them go. And this is part of the reason why it feels like the two of you cannot walk away because they are holding on to you from an energetic standpoint, though. And the thing is, though, it's like they're reliving everything that ever hurt between the two of you. And it's... um. It's really interesting because it's like they're holding on to it like a wound that won't let go of the the blade that has created it. You know, it's that's really kind of the impression that I'm getting. And whereas that is possible, um, it is it is not necessarily something that happens very often. And generally speaking, it's not. It's almost like got this. Stockholm syndrome kind of feel to it where you're holding on to something that has hurt you even though you become aware that maybe things aren't right um, and here's that sense of things not being right here's the sense of healing in place having created some sort of healing but for whatever reason um, they're still unable to move. It's like they're they're frozen in place despite having made some realizations that they need to get moving. Um, feel like this is pretty relevant to what's happening with that third party energy. And a couple of readings ago, or maybe it was one of the one of the extended readings we did in the not too distant past, we were looking at the um, the connective or the connectivity between you and this person and their third party the third party energy and how it connects to you one of the things that we saw was you know just this inability i guess to move forward because there's they're locked in to a lesson that they haven't learned because they don't have what they need to get disconnected or disengaged from that third party um, that was a big piece of, of what we learned. And so that kind of impacts you. It, it impacts you on a couple of levels. But one of the impacts to you was every time your person crosses a bridge and improves something and gets farther along, they um, they do something like it's beneficial to you as well. Just like every time you crack some code or solve a problem, um, it's beneficial to them. And so now it's not just a matter of them doing, you you doing all the work and them taking benefit. There's also a fair amount of them doing some of the work as well. So that's a really positive thing. Um, we're going to look now into, you know, what it is, the nature of the relationship that causes them to be so sticky. So we see a little bit of it here. There's that incredible sense of bond and connectedness and feeling like you have to get closer to this thing that hurts and yet being afraid to move toward it unable to move toward it not in the process of making it happen but yet not being able to let it go it's got a very strong sense of not being able to let it go so their energy is holding on to you, but what else is going on here? What's the nature of this? What's the nature of this relationship that you are experiencing with this person such that it can't, you can't seem to get freed from it? Well, it's not over. The relationship has um, interactions that are still very much in place, very much still happening. So it's a matter of unfinished business with the world in reverse like that. Um, that's pretty specific. We also have the nine of wands popping back up. So there it was. There was one where I was saying, ooh, I don't know if that feels like it's supposed to be part of this. 
um, I just put it back in. So it is supposed to be part of it. We have the Nine of Wands and the Two of Swords. So this is about a decision that needs to be made, but being a little bit like your person is injured, emotionally injured, and has a hard time making such a decision. This is that psychic wounding and that emotional injury and a sense of feeling very defensive and like they can't really calm down. Um, there's unfinished business here. They have a hard time being able to calm down and now they're being faced with a decision. Either this or that. It's not a, a place where they can go... Um, like it's not a crossroads where they're ultimately all going to end up in the same place. This is a crossroads where you're making a division. So you're going one way and the other road goes another way. So they have an actual real decision that has to be made here. Um, but they're making it with this feeling of resistance. And so there's a sense of fear and kind of grasping on to your energy and really just kind of not wanting to let it go. But I feel like that feel that fear and holding on to one another is mutual. That's something that's happening in both directions. Um, it feels like, why would I want to hold on to this person that has hurt me and I'm just trying to walk away? And in fact, that's what a couple of you have been saying. Um, but that's really difficult to do when you've invested connecting your soul to this person's as far as you have. You have a really significant bond with them. Um, there is a sense of this being an unconventional bond. So it's not necessarily, um, it's not necessarily something that's going to be simple and easy and you just walk in. I mean, obviously it's shown itself not to be. You've got a situation where somebody has, um, already maybe married someone else and you've discovered and this isn't everybody but there there are some of you that will fit into this category some of you where they've already married someone else and so you've got this situation where they can't leave their family you can't leave your family there's not maybe a need or a desire to leave your families and yet you've got this bond you've got this spiritual investment you have an unconventional place where you haven't figured out how this person is going to fit in yet there are decisions to make, but it doesn't feel like they're confident decisions. It feels like they're defensively made decisions because both of you are saying, I'm really tired. I'm exhausted with all this. Just want to maybe be able to walk away. And the energy is just saying, well, I'm not done with you yet. Your person is having a similar sort of situation with their third party energy, which has them fighting on multiple fronts. One of the things that they ultimately learn out of this is emotionally being able to give and take at a more of a an equal level. So that's something where they have really fallen short with you. And so the good news is that with this investment, they start to be able to feel you a little bit better because empathy plays into this in a major way. Um, but they start to be able to feel that um, they haven't been in a way that they have not been able to feel before. So maybe they knew this, but they couldn't really feel it. They're getting ready to be able to understand on a much deeper level why it feels like you were not being treated fairly in this situation. Or it feels like you were coming up short um, from the emotional standpoint. You were putting in more than they were putting in and they're about to feel that on a very deep level. I think some of them are about to have the tables turned. Definitely they're going to be able to go in and do some thinking. Some of you may get an apology phone call from this one. This is, um, I am distinctly reminded of a an apology phone call that one person received from their ex who said, oh my goodness, I've now had someone take advantage of me in the same way that I took advantage of you and I feel like I owe you an apology. So it didn't change everything. It didn't turn the clock back, but it did help to find a little bit of resolution for the two of them who um, continued to go their separate ways, but did so a little bit more amicably. Here we have the Two of Swords of that decision again. So that's that Two of Swords up here. We have the Two of Swords over here again. A lot of a need to make a decision, but a lot of a need to look deeply into that decision and figure out what it is that actually drives you forward. So you guys, um, when we look at what the nature of this relationship is, it really is over and over um, you being given opportunities to do the right thing, whether it's by doing the right thing by yourself, doing your own energy right, um, doing right by one another. There's something very special that you find. And I was just, I was looking at the nine of cups and I was thinking, well, 
I sure do feel the Ten of Cups and it was right underneath it. So again, there is so much in here about the two of you being shown what is possible. So both of you may have gotten into a situation where you think you know what it is that you want. Um, you've moved toward it. Your person has really dug in and gotten pretty far into something that they thought was something they wanted, such that when they were confronted with something that was truly what maybe they needed to be thinking about as what they wanted, they, they completely panicked and kind of ran the other direction. Um, you are not making as much of a shift toward what you what would constitute your wish fulfillment as your person was so I think you had a little bit more of an idea of what was going to make you happy to begin with but there still is having to ask that question on your side having to ask the question well so I'm not in the situation where I would most want to be um, when I do see that how do I respond and if you respond by moving toward it that's very beneficial but when it then runs away from you because that's how your person responded when they came across you um, then you have to figure out what your next response is going to be because then maybe it's not too good to be true after all it needs to be worked with um, so this is a matter of both of you kind of and these are lessons that we've seen come up between the two of you before um, part of the reason that you're unable to walk away from each other is because of the nature of the lessons that you're learning together. Um, and it really does keep kind of bringing you back as a reminder for one another. Plus, you have invested very deeply and there's unfinished business here. Um, that unfinished business coming out <clears throat> right there at the beginning was like, well, everything else is just going to kind of be adding to this. Because the real reason that the, the two of you can't walk away is because you've got... Um, emotional unfinished business, whether it is in the form of what you might call a soul contract, premeditated decision, it might be a matter of needing to set something right. So we have the sun here in the reverse. And once again, talking about a missed opportunity, that concept of a missed opportunity has come up more than once here. Um, and then in that case, though, it's more a sense of needing to do something right, but not again, being able to do it just yet. This seems really familiar. It feels like the energy of the reading where we, I'm not even going to try and remember if this was yesterday or the day before, but it was a reading where um, your person is looking at the situation with their third party and they are not matured to the point where they're ready to take whatever deal they're ultimately going to end up taking. Okay. And this is that same kind of concept. Um, the level of development just isn't yet there. Now, it may be there on your side. They certainly seem to think it is, and their perception of you is very high. This is a person who is somewhat intimidated by you, and I think we're going to get into, we looked at yesterday, we looked into how they feel about you. One thing that came out just a tiny little bit was their perception of you, and it was actually the Queen of Pentacles, which is equivalent to this Queen of Coins that came out. So I think when we get into the extended, we'll look a little bit more into what they, what you mean to them and what the, um, what you are to them. We'll look into that a little bit more, how they see you. Um, for now, though, we've got the Knight of Wands here, which is, um, it's again, it's about teaching them restraint. They've had to learn some level of restraint. Now, it doesn't probably seem like it because here's somebody that saw something that they thought was amazing and they turned tail and ran away or they ghosted out or they somehow turned the switch off. Um, but it was only because they were overriding like an undeniable urge to keep moving forward, which, by the way, is something they had already started to do, as you know. So, um, yeah, I think when we get into the extended, we'll look a little bit more deeply into this. We can see why it is that um, they're unable to walk away and that you're unable to walk away. Things just aren't finished. There's a lot of attraction there. You're learning some very overlapped lessons. And the way that they see you, they just have a hard time with that. So we'll look a little bit closer at how they see you and just kind of see how it goes from there. Um, before we get into the extended, though, we're going to look a little bit more at you and just kind of what lessons you should be focused on as you're looking at the rest of this or maybe just what's that practical information for you. I always like to look a little bit at for people in this collective, what is your next next thing to do because the people in this collective are looking at solving their problems and getting better so you've got the tower um you've got a tower headed your way and you are encouraged 
to lean into it. We got this, we got this, um, I guess it was, oh, I don't know how long ago it was. It felt like it was a few months ago. We started getting the tower and it was, a, ooh, change is coming. Lean into this change. Go, go, go. The time is now. And I was kind of like, oh, that seems really exciting. But what kind of change are we talking about? And then you guys started to write to me about the different changes you were going through, which by the way, I don't necessarily write back because I can't write back to everybody, but I absolutely read it all. Um, as I started to see what kinds of changes you were going through, I realized that um, that there was a lot to there was a lot to benefit or a lot for you to benefit from by leaning into it. So you have the page of wands. You're going to have some things to work through as you're trying to lean into it here. Um, but sometimes I think just being aware of it is going to be helpful. So you've got the emperor energy, which um, can be incredibly supportive and can be incredibly like providing for, but it can also be a little bit like forcing you of, uh, authoritatively to do something that you're maybe not ready to do. Test the waters carefully because you may have some situations here where you're ready to do something, but you're allowing yourself to get by with less than you're capable of. Um, you are absolutely authorized to use this emperor energy to give yourself a, a kick in the booty butt. However, keep in mind that it may be that the depression is heavy enough that you need to take it, um, maybe modify a little bit like you would modify a yoga movement to make it more appropriate for you if you have an injury or you're coming out of a, like a, um, coming off a pregnancy or something like that. Like you modify it. You don't not do it. You just modify it. It could be that you modify your behavior like this to accommodate the infirmity of depression that you may be feeling and it does come across like an infirmity it's like a stiff muscle so it's not something that feels like deep dysthymia it feels a little bit like the sort of depression that you could like drag you down but you could also choose to power through so the emperor energy allows you to power through that um, if that's the right way for you to go so interesting. So you may have to power through some things, but you're encouraged to lean into the change, the change because it feels like once you get past that initial issue, it's going to be a lot easier to do. Um, but the initial issue may be pretty strong. So um, respect yourself. Give yourself the amount of time that you need. There's something that you need to be able to work through getting past. This will be like a switch. When you're able to get past it, the switch will simply turn off and you'll be able to say, oh, this thing no longer bothers me anymore. But until then, it really does bother you and should be honored. Um, you have the Queen of Swords, which tells you, okay, but you still have to get past it anyway. Um, so definitely a sense of something that is going to need to be changed and it's going to create a transformation. It doesn't feel comfortable. But again, it kind of feels like you're going to wake up the next morning and be, like, oh, that wasn't so bad. I And never really turn back. You're never really going to turn back after that. You are going to have increased balance as a result of it. So it's like whatever you're removing is something that was causing a wobble in your turn, you know. And now here's something that you're going to, um, you're actually going to have better balance as a result of it. And I realize that's like a, 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 like a dancer making a turn. So when you aren't balanced over whatever your pivot point is, whether it's your toe or um, whatever you're spinning on most of the time, it's some portion of your foot, right? So if you're not um, centered weight-wise over that, you may end up with a little bit of a wobble in your turn. And so as you're working to create a more balanced turn, you're looking to minimize that wobble. You minimize that wobble somehow in this situation where you cut something off that now everything flows a little bit more smoothly. But again, you're going to be a little nervous about doing it. Um, it doesn't solve all your problems, but it certainly does solve some pretty significant ones. So you've got the six of wands in the reverse saying, hey, things kind of continue on from here. You're not just done. You're still going to have work to do. I think by now we're used to seeing that card because it comes out an awful lot, but we're also used to the concept because we know these are not simple cures. Um, these are a situation where, so we have the Knight of Coins. This is exactly what it is. It's a situation where it takes a little while to work through some of these things. It's not necessarily simple. You are encouraged once again to turn your eye to the thing that's going to set your soul on fire. We haven't heard as much about it lately, but now we started hearing about it here in the last couple of days um, again. So 
This thing that's going to set your soul on fire, we heard a lot about this earlier this year, and really this is something that is not about your person, but it may be satellite to your person. So one of the examples that I liked using back then was, um, when it first started coming up, was let's say you write to help yourself feel better as you work through this process. So this might be moving into a situation where you choose to write a book. That's the thing that sets your soul on fire. And so it's not completely unlike the piece that associates it with your person because writing maybe is your coping mechanism, but maybe it's writing something that's a helpful book that helps people get through their situation or writing about something that you feel confident about and that helps to buoy you up. So it's something that helps to set your soul on fire. And in this case, maybe educating the world about something, but it's really fantastic um, the impact that it has on you. So there's a sense of healing, healing from that big three, which is that fear of rejection, fear of abandonment, fear of betrayal, all coming out of what's happening here with your person and this, this locked debate you seem to be in here and your ability to find comfort in generally uncomfortable situations um, is not going ignored. It's not going completely ignored either by you or by those around you. People are starting to notice what you're capable of. You're going to notice a little bit more of that across the back half of the year, though. I think there's a lot of this energy of you growing into your own. Um, I don't know what that turns into once we hit you know, the turnover into 2024. I also don't think it just ends at the at December 31st, but I am getting a lot of a sense of, I haven't done a fourth quarter reading, but what I would say is um, we're getting a lot of, your flame is growing right now through the end of this year kind of energy. So just something to think about. This is a great time for you to be embarking on something that you're passionate about. You're able to set down things that don't um, don't need to be under your purview that, that, you know, it's that lesson that you've heard in the past where it's time for you to set things down that you don't hold responsibility for or that you can't control. Um, your ability to do that is going to be much better. Um, keep in mind, though, you still have you've got this mirrored page of wands or this duplicated page of wands. It's still got this sense of you working through something that feels a little bit like depression. Um, but yet with this King of Cups, I feel like you're in a great place to do it because um, that's a balanced King of, King of Cups. So there's a lot of, like you're running into people here that maybe not romantic contacts, but people who say they're going to call you and then they call you. People that you get into a hobby with and that you feel like you can call on the weekend and it's exciting. I mean, this is something that, a very sunny disposition and things that are now available and opening up in you. And that's where your area of focus is supposed to be. Um, and, and the whole question that we came in asking was, why can't we get unlocked out of this situation? Why does it feel like it's sticking? And it's really like it's setting you free. But this is a lesson that you have. These are lessons that you have to learn. Um I think, though, like I said, we're going to get in a little bit deeper and see how your person is seeing you. And let's get into that here um, in the extended. So if you're interested in the extended, the link is down below in the uh, description for the video. I will see you there or I will see you back tomorrow and we will take a look at what is coming for you this weekend.